a pretty big disappointment. I kind of liked it, I guess. That was an absolute nightmare. The man we don't talk about just did not care for. That made absolutely no sense to me. Sweetener cannot let me down. I was like, oh. You wouldn't let anybody speak. Hello everybody, welcome or welcome back to my YouTube channel and today we're going to be talking about Ariana Grande and her discography and my opinions on her discography like album rankings and song ratings and we'll talk about how I discovered her as an artist um, everything to do with like Wicked and stuff and what made me want to listen to her um, so let's get on with this video so the way this video is going to be structured, we're going to first talk about um, how I first discovered Ariana and the first couple of songs I listened to from her then I'm going to talk about um, uh, the Yes and release, and then we're going to talk about the um, lead up and release of Eternal Sunshine, and then we're going to talk about how I um, decide I'm going to listen to her full discography, um, and then we're going to talk about my um, uh, some of my song ratings, not all of them because there's too many, um, but some of them and my opinions on each album. Then I'm going to talk about my album uh, rankings, both the mathematical version and my personal version, and then we're going to talk about um, if she's on my playlist for Ariana and my, um, if I'm going to buy any CDs from her, and like future, my future with her, and like stuff like that. So let's get on with the video, and also make sure to like and subscribe. So it all starts when I was scrolling through YouTube shorts, and I saw a short about Ariana hating on one of her songs, um, and which was Put Your Hearts Up. And I was very interested in this, I decided I wanted to go to a YouTube channel, and listen to Put Your Hearts Up, and I listened to it, and I kind of liked it, I can't lie. Um, and then I scrolled through some of her YouTube channels, some of the music videos and everything, and I saw the, um, I saw, um, Seven Rings, and I decided, you know what, let's listen to it, because the, the, um, the thumbnail looked interesting. I kind of liked it, I guess, um, but yeah, I didn't really return to her after that, I just, like, ignored her for the, um, next couple of months. And um, that's basically how I started, like, um, how I first discovered her as an artist. Then at the uh, start of this year, or it was in December, I can't even remember, um, I, hear, I hear about her upcoming song, Yes And, that was coming out um, as the lead single of her um, newest album. Um, and I thought, um, I thought, cool, that's cool. And I, interact, I interacted with a bit of um, content about it. Um, and also I found that she was one of the, the actors in The Wicked, um, which is so cool. I um, interacted with a bit of content about that. I saw her like... Uh, social media pages and I saw I, I watched a few videos on there and I was scrolling through um, uh, YouTube and I saw the music video on the release day and I was like you know what let's give it a watch because I had seen some content about it and the hype around it but like you know what let's watch it and I, I like the song the music video was all right but the song itself I, I really like it. it has like a disco pop again really like that song I heard that her um, album coming out Eternal Sunshine and I was like um, I was thinking maybe I should listen to it because I listened to the lead single, I liked it, and maybe I like this album. And I was going back and forth whether to listen to it because I knew she had a long discography. I didn't want to do what I did with Taylor and listen to a couple of her songs and then want to listen to the rest of the discography. So basically what happened with Taylor, I listened to Shake It Off and a few songs from Midnight and a few um, of her um, past songs. And then I was like, you know what, I'm going to listen to Taylor's first full discography. That was an absolute nightmare. There was like 10 albums and I missed so much stuff out as well. It was like, like two to three months to do. Like I, like, I don't know, it just took forever and I just did not like the experience. So I told myself after that, I'm never going to do that with another artist again um, with a, a discography like Taylor's. Obviously with Olivia, she had one album at the time and the new lead single Vampire, so that was very easy for me. Um, but with Ariana, she had she would have had six or seven albums by the time I would have listened to the discography, and some of them have like 20 songs, so like that's a lot, and I was like, oh, maybe, maybe not. But I was thinking, maybe Eternal Sunshine only, that's it, um, because I did like Yes Sounds quite a bit. Um, and I was thinking um, if I should listen to her discography before Eternal Sunshine, but I did decide against that because I wanted to see what her new stuff would be like before going back to her old stuff. So time goes by and I keep seeing her all over social media about her being in Wicked, the Wicked trailers, um, the upcoming release of a new album, the promotion, the track listing, the stuff about her, the, the Spotify like, 1 billion uh, plaques, like the, I really like those videos, I, I watched them quite a bit. Yeah, I just uh, kept seeing her all over to social media, and it was like convincing me more and more to um maybe go and listen to her discography or listen to Eternal Sunshine. But then I heard about the Kanye situation, the man we don't talk about. But basically, he was going to release part one of his new album 
on the um, release date of Eternal Sunshine and part two on the release date of the Tortured Poets Department. It was on the online the Swifties and the RNators were planning on teaming up a bit and uh, making sure that both albums beat Kanye on the charts and block his um, album from going on number one and getting high um, charting uh, presence. As a Swifty myself, I was like, you know what, I'm going to join in and I'm going to listen to Eternal Sunshine because I was on the fence of, doing, of listening to it like, eh, maybe, maybe not. But then I was like, you know, at that moment, I was like, you know what, I will listen to it. And you, who knows, I'll possibly like it. So then we get to the release date of Eternal Sunshine, and I was actually really excited for this. However, it was a school day, so I listened to two songs while getting ready for, um, for getting ready for school, and I listened to like a, a few more songs on the way to school on like Spotify Shuffle because um didn't I don't have the premium, I have the free plan. Um, so yeah, I listened to a few songs and I really liked a lot of them. Um, some of them not so much. Some of them I love so much. For example, Supernatural, love that song. Um, yeah, I listened to a few on my way to school, going back home afterwards and like and then I just did listen to her entire album again um, throughout listen to the songs I didn't um, originally listen to and yeah I really liked Eternal Sunshine I loved it the lyrics were great the productions I just loved it so much her voice her vocals stunning just loved it so much so that's kind of what convinced me at that moment you know what I'm gonna listen to her discography and if I regret it who cares because I think because her discography is not as big as Taylor's it can't be as bad as um as it was when I did Taylor. I'm not to say um, Taylor's music was bad, I just did not like how long it was taking because I'm a very impatient per person. So yeah, but I was like, you know what, let's listen to her discography. And now we get on to my uh, discography ratings. I do have to mention when I um, listened to her discography, I did not listen to any remixes, soundtracks, uh, Christmas songs, I wasn't in the Christmassy mood, and off album features where she was featured on another artist's song on their album. This just makes it a bit easier to listen to her discography. And I also did the same thing when I was listening to Olivia and Taylor. Um, so yeah, I just wanted to make it a bit fairer. Um, in the future, I might listen to them, um, who knows. I did listen to uh, two of her uh, standalone singles, so Put Your Hearts Up and Focus. Um, I don't know if there are any more, there might be, I'm not sure. But yeah, I just listened to those um, because they are, they haven't got like, they're not like an other artist feature or soundtrack or anything. I thought I might as well listen to them. And it was only two more songs. So yeah, I just listened to those. I gave Put Your Hearts Up an 8 out of 10 because it is a bit cheesy. And Focus 6 out of 10, I just did not like that um, male voice singing the um, Focus on Me, you know. I just didn't like that really so yeah that's one of my least favorites to be honest so moving on to yours truly and obviously because it's her debut album i didn't have um extremely high expectations uh for this album however there were some highlights um for example uh piano and you'll never know and popular song i liked all of those um i did not give any song on this album a 10 out of 10 ra um, rating um I am those songs I just listened to were nines out of tens and they were the highlights. Um, I can expect this from a debut album because obviously the lyricism won't be as good and production might not be as good as it can be. Um, so I did, I didn't, I did expect more and it could be more, but it was definitely good for what it um, um was. Um, so yeah, I did like this album, but it's definitely one of my least uh, favorite album out of all her albums. Um, so yeah, those songs were nines out of tens and those are my highlights. A few of the highlights, uh, Baby Eye was an eight out of ten. Um, Tattoo Tart was an 8 out of 10, The Way and Better Left and Said, they're all 8 out of 10s, I, I like them as well, obviously not as much as the other ones, but you know, I still like them, they're definitely some highlights on that album. So now we're going to move on to My Everything. Now I expected this album to be a slightly more similar to Yours Truly, because their um, album covers gave like the same energy, but this album was definitely a lot better than Yours Truly, I can't lie. Um, there is one 10 out of 10 song and that was Bang Bang. Um, I do understand that could be a bit weird, but it's because this um, song is so fun and so upbeat and I, I keep I kept coming back to it. I did originally give it a 9 out of 10, but I, it was one of the few songs I did change the rating to a 10 out of 10. Yeah, definitely really loved it. Um, yeah, and I just kept coming back to it. It's really fun. I do understand how it can be over-sexual. But like I can ignore that because of the fun production and the features are absolutely great. But all the songs um that I realised one last time is another song that I forgot to mention in primary school like years ago we sang that song in choir so I did forget about that. Um that's why I recognised that song and 
um, a few other songs, so Problem, uh, Why Try Break Free, they're all 9s out of 10s, and One Last Time, they're all great songs, just just not the, um, they don't step to be a 10 out of 10 song, but I still absolutely loved it, and My Everything was definitely a step up from Yours Truly, um, and Bang Bang being a 10 out of 10, so it has a 10 out of 10 song, um, yeah, but there were some um, snoozes on this album, obviously, um, like Hands On Me, and intro but i do think that's like a, literally an intro and also i do want to quickly mention that um i do think interludes on albums are a bit weird i don't understand the meaning of interludes um because like i'm not gonna get a snack or go to the toilet while i'm listening to an album because i can just pause it so i don't really understand the need for an interlude so yeah if someone can explain that to me in the comments that would be so helpful and another thing Please don't bully me for liking the popular songs. You'll notice with a lot of the um, 10 out of 10 songs that I'm going to tell you about, um, they are like classes like the popular songs or have over a billion streams or are singles. It's the same with like Taylor. I love Shake It Off and Antihero. I love those songs. They're perfect. Um, I do think people shouldn't be bullied for liking a popular song because they are popular for a reason. Um, they're good songs. That's why. So, yeah, just don't bully me for liking popular songs like Bang Bang and other ones coming up soon. But yeah, My Everything was definitely a great album and it's definitely a step up from Love Truly. Now we're moving on to Dangerous Woman. I had high expectations for this album and they were met and they were exceeded as well. This song gave like reputation energy so I was really excited for this one because I love reputation. And this album did not disappoint. It has uh, four 10 out of 10 songs um, and it, it did have five but I did demote um, Step On Up down to a nine because it was weird like um instrument in it or it's like gl not glitch but like thing in it i'll play it for you here I'm classy, but I don't mind if you get at me. It's okay um that repeats in the background i just don't really like it that much and that, I, I find it a bit annoying so um that's why i demoted it without it it would definitely be um a 10 out of 10 song. okay i love how she sings in it um so yeah but the 10 out of 10 songs that, are, that stayed at 10 out of 10 are dangerous woman into you greedy and uh, bad decisions um these songs are just so fun uh, the uh, productions are great lyricism were great and um, i look and some other um standouts were and um, be all right uh, side to side every day um they were all pretty good as well nines out of tens so yeah i loved all these songs um and the electric more electric feel i love that um on this album and she just she definitely needs to do a bit more of that um because i love it so much and this is one of my favorite albums if you do it mathematically and even my personal ranking it was definitely really um good and i definitely really liked it um so dangerous woman was definitely exceeding my expectations and i loved it a lot i just thought that i'd tell you that my favorite songs on this album were dangerous woman and into they're very well made i love them a lot um the half the albums i don't mention what my favorite song is so i thought i'd just tell you so now we are going to move on to Sweetener. Now, I had pretty high expectations for this album, but the first third of the album gave me proper anxiety. Like, I was thinking this album was a disappointment, because, like, the first third was a pretty big disappointment, I cannot lie. Um, like, there's no 10 out of 10s in that. I just did not like the first third, and I was thinking, oh my god, Sweetener cannot let me down, because I've heard so many good things about it, and the album titles look so good. Like, I was, like, so scared about it. But in the second third, we have three 10 out of 10s in a row. There are only three, there are only three 10 out of 10s on the album, but I still love them. And they definitely um, rose the album back up again. They are Every Time, Breathing, and No Tears Left to Cry. Um, no Tears Left to Cry is a bit um, obvious, considering that was one of the first songs I listened to, um, with those remix things I was doing in school. But yeah, the other two were just great. I loved them so much. And the... And the and the last third was definitely also really good as well. It's the first third that gave me anxiety because I did not want this album to be a disappointment because just it looks so good. The um, title's really good. Um, yeah, again, the um, little um, interludes I just did not care for at all. I don't really care for the interludes. So yeah, again, don't really get them. But yeah, those three songs I absolutely loved. And a few other um, notes. Good, good Night and Go, I gave a 9 out of 10. And I also gave Gods as a Woman a 9 out of 10. Um, I love them all. However, there was one song, Blaze, I think it was, Blazed. No, it was The Light Is Coming. Um, that song, there was this guy talking this random sentence. That made absolutely no sense to me. Play it for you now. You wouldn't let anybody speak. Um, this song made absolutely no sense to me. And I don't know. And it sounded like a cuckoo clock, like breaking. Hey, yo, trophy wife, out you want me? I don't know how to explain it. It was like really um weird. And that song was just... 
a very big letdown for, on the album. So yeah, I don't I I need someone to explain why that's like that. Or if no one can explain it, then pretty bad song. I can't lie. We're gonna go from talking about the worst songs on this album to the best songs. So my favorite song on Sweetener was definitely No Tears Left to Cry. I love the production. It's really fun to sing. Um, everything about the song is just um great, and I love the message. How after you've um cries all your tears and you're out of your little depression phase after a problem in your life um you're picking yourself back up and another thing about every time i do think that song should be called um back to you because that's mentioned a lot more in the out um, in the song so yeah just thought i'd mention that now thank you next was a pretty big disappointment i cannot lie um i was really excited for this album it has a lot of nines out of tens but if i want an album to like exceed expectations or to at least meet them it needs to have like a 10 out of 10 song which it did which was the title track, Thank You Next. Um, however, I expected there to be a lot more 10 out of 10 songs. I expected there to be um, at, um, mostly 9s and 10s. But no, there's a lot of like snoozers and songs I just didn't care for in this album. Thank You Next, the reason I gave it a 10 out of 10, because it's very sweet, and how, especially the family bit and the friends bit. The X's bit was a bit weird to me, and I almost gave it a 9 out of 10 for that. And I almost demoted it back down to a 9 when I re-listened to it. Um, but then I gave um a, I kept it at a ten because I thought it was a really sweet song and the way she sings it is really um really cute and a production how it's a bit more um chill and like that's really good I I haven't listened to any music videos by the way but I've I've heard some good things about the music video so I might listen to it but yeah that's the only ten out of ten song and I just was very disappointed by Thank You Next um I don't know just I felt it could be so much better and it just wasn't. Um, however, there were some good songs. So, Seven Rings, I gave a 9 out of 10. Uh, fake Smile and Bad Idea were 10, 9, 9 out of 10s. Now, Fake Smile, I was really excited to hear because that one I just needed to hear. Um, so, yeah, Fake Smile, I was really excited and almost met my expectations, but I had to give it a 9. So, yeah. But, yeah, I loved that song. Um, but Thank You Next is the only 10 out of 10. So, um, so, the album Thank You Next was a bit of a disappointment. Can't lie. Aronators, please. I am sorry, but like it's my opinion. I'm entitled to my opinions. So yeah, if you hate the blocks, okay. Uh simple as that. But anyway, let's move on to positions. Now, positions was an absolute great album. I love positions um a lot. There were quite a few 10 out of 10 songs, so let me name them. Uh Just Like Magic, My Hair, and Positions, the title track. I love all three of those songs, they're really cute. My hair, I was um very intrigued by. Um but, and when it ended up being a sexy song, I was like, oh, okay, did not expect that. But it was still a 10 out of 10 song, loved it so much. Um, Off the Table was another good one. Um, and Nasty and Test Drive, they were all great songs. Interlude, again, don't care for. Um, but yeah, I love um, I love most of these songs. It was a very good, al a good album, a very big step up from Thank You Next. Um, so yeah, and I do um, like the album cover, I need to mention this. But her lips on the album cover look, she look like she's had like lip filler or something, I don't know. But yeah, this album, I absolutely loved it. Um, there were some snoozers again, but um, I definitely, um, I definitely um, really liked it. And I had a lot more turn out of 10s than Thank You X, for example. So my favourite songs on Positions are definitely the title track and My Hair. Um, the whistles um, in those songs are just absolutely perfect. And I think those are what knocked those songs over the edge and got them a 10 out of 10. <laughs> And also, the um, like more magical feel of the productions on Positions is way more apparent than on other albums, and I love it so much. Like It's much softer than the other albums. I don't know how to explain it. So now we move on to Eternal Sunshine. Now, this album um, was a very big step up from the rest of the albums. It's like nothing like the other albums, and it's definitely my favourite album by far. It has like the most 10 out of 10 songs, like 5 or 6, like which is a lot. Um, so let me read them off. So my 10 out of 10 songs are by Eternal Sunshine, Supernatural, which is my favourite song on the album, um, Yes And, which I know I hate for, um, and I Wish I Hated You. Um, these This album was absolutely perfect. There's like no skips on it, and, it, and if there were some skips, um, there'd be like occasional skips sometimes, I'm not in the mood for them. But yeah, this album, I love it so much. Eternal Sunshine is my favourite album from Ariana Grande and has some of my favourite songs like Supernatural. Um, so yeah, Eternal Sunshine was definitely a lot better than other albums, but obviously it's the first album I listened to, so 
makes sense. Also, side note about Eternal Sunshine, wasn't this supposed to be the album cover? I'm not sure, because now on Spotify it looks like this, um, and there's also no CD with this cover. Um, I don't understand why, can someone explain that to me? I just need to know why it's that instead of that, because I remember people talking about that being the album cover. So I'm not very sure. So from my very minimal research, I think that the um, Yes and single cover art was supposed to be the original cover for Eternal Sunshine. And then I scrolled up through her Instagram and looked through her post. And then it there was like another post that said Eternal Sunshine out 3.8, which was exactly the same caption as when it was posted with the Yes and cover art. Um, with the um, cover art that's on Spotify so I'm very sure that it was um, originally the yes and cover and then it was changed to the one where she has like her back turned and her, with her ponytails and the reason I thought that the um, other one was the cover is because uh, people were saying it was the cover I'm not sure so now we're going to move on to my album rankings both the mathematical one where I found the mean average of all my ratings um, to get a rating for the album and then my personal one so how I felt about the album if I felt like some songs brought it way down. Um, but the mathematical and personal are very similar. So at number, for the mathematical one, at number six, because two are tied, and number six is Yours Truly. Again, there's no 10 out of 10 songs, and it is good for the time, and it did meet ex some expectations, but there were a lot of snoozes. Um, but again, that's understandable because it's a debut album. Then at number five with my mathematical ones, this one really shocked me, was Sweetener. However, I do think it's the songs on the first third that brought that um, uh, album down. But Sweetener being at number five was a big shock to me. And at number four, um, Tied at number four, is Thank You Next and My Everything. Again, if it was shocked Thank You Next is up there, I would expect it to be Sweetener to be above it. Um, but yeah, those two are tied mathematically. And then uh, number three is Positions. And then number two is Dangerous Dangerous Woman, which again, shocker. I knew that I liked this album, but I didn't know I liked it that much. And then at number one, no surprises, Eternal Sunshine. Um, however, my personal one is a bit is a bit different to that. So number seven, again, same reasons, yours truly. Then number six is My Everything, um, because it is only one uh, 10 out of 10 song on there. I know quite a few snoozes. Um, however, I do still really like the album. And number five is Thank You Next. Again, same reasons as my everything. It's just it's just not as good compared to other albums and not, and not enough good songs to outweigh the bad songs. Um, then number four is Sweetener. Opposite reasons of Thank You Next. There's, because how good the, um, the good songs are, they outweigh the bad songs. Because even the bad songs are pretty bad, the good ones are really good. Like the highs are really high, the lows are really low, you know. Then at number three is Positions. Uh, I just, again, I love the song. I like the um, synth pop and like the um, dream pop. I think that's what it's called. I don't really know. I love that. I, but I kept Dangerous Woman at number two because after doing the mathematical ranking, I realised, you know what? I do really like this album and I do think it deserves number two. But again, no surprises. Eternal Sunshine is at number one. I don't think any of us are surprised with how I've been talking about Eternal Sunshine. But yeah, that is my um, album ranking for... Ariana's albums and now we're going to talk about how I feel about her entire discography as a whole and if I'll ever revisit it now it's very obvious that I will be revisiting Eternal Sunshine however I think all the 10 out of 10 songs I will definitely want to revisit and I do think her discography as a whole has a lot of good songs and it's really good overall um it's not outstanding and not as um good to me as like Taylor's discography or Olivia's discography is theirs is more lyric based um, with good production, however, her is is more like production based. But the reason I like Eternal Sunshine a lot more than the other albums is because it's both production and lyrically based from the other albums like Yours Truly, um, My Everything, Thank You Next. Like it's got more, it's more lyrics, more um, better lyrics. Um, I, I guess for lack of a better term, but yeah, I still really um love the album. I think it's a good discography overall, and I definitely respect if you love her discography because I understand now it's a really good discography. Um. Um, but I do think I, the only songs I will revisit are my songs that are either a 9 out of 10 or a 10 out of 10. And I'm going to make my Ariana Grande playlist, which is what I play personally, will be just my 9 and 10 out of 10 songs. Um, so yeah, these are all my 10 out of 10 songs on the screen. Just thought I'd show you all if you, if you are interested. Um, so yeah, I get a lot of songs. Um, but yeah. So yeah, and then the final question is, will I be getting any CDs of hers? Um, I'm a big CD person, if you couldn't tell. Like, I collect a lot of CDs. So, um, it's a big question for me if I'll be getting these CDs. 
Um, I think the only album I will get on CD is Eternal Sunshine, uh, because I love the album so much. The rest of the albums, I'm not sure on yet. The only other two that could possibly get, I will possibly get Oppositions and Dangerous Woman. But again, I'm still not as sure, because the um, lows in those albums are pretty low, but the highs are really, really high, and it make me love the album so much. But Eternal Sunshine, the the um, lows aren't super low, they're just, they're just average, and the um, highs are like, really, really high, so that's why it's, it's leagues above the other albums, and I will definitely get the CD um, um, from HMV and anything. But anyway, guys, that was my opinions on Ariana Grande's discography. Arenators, please don't uh, come at me, don't attack me, please. Um, it's just my opinion. Um, I, I just don't think her music is totally for me. Um, there are songs I really love, like the 10 out of 10s, but there are songs I just don't really care for. Um, but yeah, those are my opinions. Let me know what you think, and let me know if you are an Arenator, and you and if you have any insight on Ariana's discography and the songs I, I talked about. That, I, that you think I should know about to maybe, like, maybe re-like the songs or re-listen to it. Um, if you want me to do another part to this one, like remixes and stuff, I, I might do that, I'm not sure. But yeah, if you enjoyed, please like and please subscribe. I, I really would like to get um, a few more subscribers, um, so yeah, that would mean the world to me. I do mainly Swift and content, however, I will try and branch out to do other artists and other content as well. Um, yeah, thank you all so much for watching, and I'll see you all next time. Bye!